one of the things that I see coming up again and again for people in regard to these teachings and practices is that somebody asked on the YouTube channel uh, in regard to the last talk, because in the last talk I was trying to use the, the duck and the rabbit thing as a way of uh, using it as kind of a, uh, a metaphor for non-duality, you know, that two things exist, but they're one thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, those two things, when it comes to who we are, are the personality and the awareness. We talk a lot about the personality and the awareness. Mm -hmm. And in that, uh, in that talk, one of the things that I mentioned near the end of the talk is I said that the, uh, the personality and the awareness are the same thing. And uh, somebody posted a question and said, you know, you said that the personality and the awareness are the same thing. How are they the same thing? Uh, and then somebody posted another question. And then I, I responded to that by saying, uh, I quoted the Heart Sutra where it says in the Heart Sutra, form is emptiness, emptiness is form. Mm -hmm. Emptiness is another way of saying awareness. The awareness is empty, right? It's empty, it's formless, right? So that's the emptiness. The form is the personality, right? But the personality is awareness. Non-duality teaches us that not two. There's not two. This is key. This is key to, to understanding uh, the truth. Uh, and this understanding has to be brought to practice. It has to be something that you apply. Mm. So uh, when I posted that response and said that, you know, that the form is emptiness, emptiness is form, the personality is awareness, awareness is the, you could say, the material of everything, you know, everything is awareness, and the personality is awareness. Uh, and uh, th this can help to practice because um, I often say here, and, and these teachings often repeat that when you're practicing the truth, you're not doing anything. When you're practicing meditation, you're not doing anything. Which means that if the personality is awareness and you're looking at it in a dualistic way, you would then think, oh, well, I'm being the personality. I need to start being the awareness. Right? I need to change from being the personality to being the awareness. Right? But I often say you don't have to do that because you already are the awareness. So you don't have to change, you don't have to do anything. This is a matter of realization. It's realizing something that's already true. You're not doing anything, you're realizing something that's already true. So the person on the YouTube thing asked me another question and said, you said form is emptiness, emptiness is form. Uh, and the personality is awareness. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, 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 if the form is emptiness and emptiness is form and the personality is awareness, the question that the person asks is, how do, how do, I, uh, how do I get to that? How do I experience that? How do I be that? And uh, that's, that's, that question is, is not surprising to me because that's a personality question. You know, the personality wants to tell me what to do, tell me how to do it, you know, so that I can do it and then I can have what you're talking about. But that doesn't work with these teachings uh, because this is not about doing anything. It's about experiencing that which is already the case. It's about being who you actually are. But I get the question, the question is in my life, in my life as I live my life and I deal with the circumstances that life presents me, how do I, how do I experience this emptiness, right? How do I, because if my, if my default state is to be the personality and to be the physical body, that's what I'm already doing. Hmm? It sounds like this emptiness is the way to go. It sounds like this emptiness to be the awareness, that's the missing side of the equation. So how do I do that? Tell me how to do that, right? This question comes up in all kinds of different ways from people all the time. So the thing is this, in order for you to, to experience the benefit of the truth, in order for you to experience the benefit of the reality of what you and I are, 
there's no getting around the fact that you have to be able to distinguish awareness. You have to have a distinction about awareness. You have to be able to recognize awareness experientially. This is critical. This is critical. You have to be able to recognize awareness experientially. You have to be able to notice that awareness is happening right now where you are. You have to, you have to be able to notice that awareness is happening right now where you are. And by noticing it, you're distinguishing it, right? Because if the awareness is something that's absent in the equation, if you're being the personality, right? It means that you're not aware of the awareness. The awareness is, re the awareness is always there, right? Even the personality is awareness, but you didn't know that. You know, you were being the personality like the personality was separate from awareness, or the personality is real, the personality is this uh, my self-image that is real, you know, my self-concept is real. Well, we talk about the fact that that's, that's just not so, that your self-concept is a concept, it's an image, it's a process, it's a, it's a program that plays in your brain. And that the way, when the program plays in your brain, it manifests itself in thinking. So, and, and when you identify with the thinking activity, right, you're being the personality. You're being the personality. And this is what is the default state. This is where, this is what all the thinking is that goes on in the mind right, when you're not using the thinking process to work, but when the thinking process is a reaction, when the thinking process is, is, is talking about what's happening, right, when the thinking process is telling you what's going on, right. And since that thought process is fear-based, and since it's delusional, and since it's, it's based on your conditioning, right, based on whatever scared you in the past, you know, whatever bad experiences you had in the past, since that's the case, it's going to be a distorted process. It's not going to be presenting you with a realistic narrative. It's going to be talking to you in a distorted way. It's going to be describing things to you in a way that's disturbing and upsetting. Mm. So that's the orientation that you start with, and there is no orientation for awareness. Your whole world is being the personality, living in time and space, in relationship to other personalities, in, in a world, right, in which everybody believes that happiness is something to pursue, which everybody believes that happiness is in the world, so we have to get it to, in order to experience it, right? So that's the, that's the default state. Now, through the practice of meditation and through the teachings, it should start to occur to you that awareness is always available. Awareness is here. The awareness is, is where you are. You're experiencing awareness. It may not have been distinguished by you in the past because you just thought the personality was, was all there is, right? But now what we're saying is the, the awareness is the presence. The awareness is your availability to circumstances. The awareness is what has you exist. The awareness is what has you exist. So in that statement, you know, uh, sat, chit, ananda, existence is the first part of that. Awareness is what has you exist. I exist, right, I exist. And then the second part of that is I exist, I am consciousness. I exist, I am consciousness, and then I experience happiness and well-being. So you have to first distinguish awareness. Uh, as a personality, and when I say distinguish awareness, I don't mean just learn about it conceptually, right, to just learn about it like an academic subject that you're getting information about. No. I mean, to, what I mean by distinguish is you look and see, that you can actually look and see the awareness so it's real for you. It's no longer a concept, it's real, you know, you, it's actually happening. And when you can distinguish it and recognize it's actually happening and notice it, right, notice it, right, now you have something that you can start to work with to apply. So when you find yourself in your life dealing with circumstances that are provocative, circumstances that trigger you, circumstances that result in upset, circumstances that when you're upset and fearful or when you're upset and frustrated, when you're upset and angry, that the emotions take over, make you behave in ways that are unworkable, unrealistic and destructive, right? But now that you have this idea of awareness to work with, you want to apply it now. You want to apply it now. What does that mean? It means that when things happen now, that you're watching, you're witnessing, you're looking at what's happening when what's happening is happening. 
That's different from being the personality, right, in the story of what's happening. The personality is the identity that you're being in the story that's happening. And so if you're being the identity in the story that's happening, the way it will occur to you is it's disturbing, I'm upset, uh, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, it's awful, it's difficult, right? That, that, that's all talking about it from the uh, identification with the personality and identification with what's going on. But if you start to train yourself to wake up, to remember that when you start to see yourself in a situation that would be provocative, that would be disturbing, right? You start watching. You start watching. What are the thoughts that are playing? What are the emotions that are playing? What is the interpretation of the circumstances that's occurring? You start watching this. This is the application of meditation. You start watching this. And when you start watching this, it's not that you're, watch, you're, it's not that you're just watching this. You're watching this to see if you can experience what's happening as the awareness instead of identifying with the thoughts and the emotions and being the personality. That's, that's the shift that has to happen. If that shift doesn't happen, you're, you're still in the personality. You know, you may have, you may understand the concepts about what we're talking about here. You may have brief glimpses of it, you know, from time to time, but it still eludes you. It still eludes you. It's still, it's still escaping you. It's still not making the difference that it promises to make in your life. Because you have to get to a place where you distinguish awareness so that it's real for you, that it's available for you, that it's present to you. And then when circumstances arise, you've got to be able to experience yourself as this awareness watching what's happening, watching the thoughts, watching the feelings, watching the interpretation of what's occurring. And as you begin to practice doing that, you will win. You, sometimes you will succeed and other times you will fail depending upon the circumstances, depending upon the particular emotion that got stirred up, depending upon the thought process, and depending upon how practiced you are, how, you know, how, how much experience, how, how, how far along you've gotten in learning how to play this piano. You know, I'm saying learning how to play this piano because it's just like that. You know, the, the better you get at, 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 at understanding what's going on, and the better you get at being able to see it in real time, Right? Now, when circumstances arrive in your life, you can begin to apply the practice with the circumstances. If you're dealing with your children or your spouse, or you're dealing with your finances, you know, the things in life that disturb you and get you upset, you know, if you're dealing with something about your health, if you're dealing with any of those, you know, those of you who have uh, gone to David Radden's talks, right? What does he talk about? What does he talk about when he gives a talk? He usually shares about something that's happened recently in his life, and he, and he shares with us how, what a joy it was for him to experience not being at the effect of those circumstances. That's what he talks about all the time. What happened, and the fact that it happened didn't throw him, the fact that it happened didn't cause him to go into upset, didn't cause him to suffer. <coughs> This is the heart of the matter. This is what we're here for. This is what this is all about. So you want to get to a place as soon as possible where you're applying these teachings and practices. And the way you apply them is you, you pay attention to your life. You know, and as Michael Singer says, start with the small stuff. You know, start paying attention. This is something you actively have to do. It's not going to happen by itself. You know, you, you have to be the, you have to generate this. You have to cause this, right? And the way you cause this is you pay attention, you start with the little stuff, the annoyances, right? You start with the annoyances, the moods, you wake up in a bad mood, right? You, start, you work with things like that that aren't really all that intense and don't have all that, in, that serious consequences. And if you work with those, right, when you're working with those, you start to develop an ability to pay attention in such a way where you can see what's happening, but you're not being it. You're not being what's happening, you're seeing what's happening. You see what's happening, you see the, you can see the, the, the disturbance arise in awareness, in, in terms of emotions. It could be annoyance, right? And if it's annoyance, you know, there's usually some kind of exclamation thoughts that go along with it, right? Something happens and you go, God damn it, right? Yeah, that's, that's an annoyance, isn't it? Right, it's an annoyance, yeah. God damn it, right? It's an interesting phrase that we say, God damn it. God damn it, 
right? So, but you work with that now. Instead of just saying, God damn it, and being annoyed, you watch the God damn it come up. You watch the emotion come up. And you're not even trying to change the emotion or change the, 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 the speaking of the God damn it, no. You're just staying in the witness position. You're just watching it come up. You may even say, God damn it, right? But you're still watching it. You're still watching it. You're not being the upset. You're looking at the upset. When you do that with an annoyance like that, right, you're taking the energy out of the annoyance. The annoyance is not something that you're going to, you know, there's not going to be a God damn it. And then after that, there's, there's going to be some more statements like this. This always happens. Why does this have to happen? Right. That's following up on the God damn it. Right. But through practicing, you'll notice that the God damn it happened, right? And you'll be abiding in the witness of the God damn it, right? So the why does this always happen doesn't come up. See? This is directly working with your experience, right? right? And, and if you do this with any degree of consistency, you will start to notice that things are affecting you less. You're not being as affected as you had been in the past. And because you're not being affected as you have been in the past, things that come up don't last, you know? Something can happen during the day that under normal circumstances would have you be uh, upset the rest of the day, maybe the rest of the week, depending upon what it is. It might be even more than that, right? But you're learning now to be skillful in dealing with your experience that you're having by paying attention to it in a certain way and applying what you're practicing in formal meditation and applying what you're learning, right? So that you can start to be involved in this, uh, this process of, of, of distinguishing what's happening, distinguishing the thinking. I'm, I'm not thinking the thoughts, I'm distinguishing the thinking as something that's happening in awareness. I'm not feeling the feelings, I'm distinguishing emotions as something that arises in my experience, right? So this is, now I'm looking at these things differently than I did before. You gotta break, you gotta break out of the idea that you're thinking the thoughts. You gotta break out of that, right? It's often the case when I'm talking to people about this very subject and we're, we're talking about a particular situation that, they, that occurred for them, right? It's, off, it's often the case that they'll start talking about the situation and I'll, and I'll have to interrupt them and say, are you aware that what you're saying are just thoughts, right? Are you aware that what you're saying are just thoughts? Because it, it, apparently you're not, because you're not, you're not relating to it as just thoughts, you're relating to it as, as, as what you, those thoughts are saying are true. There is the mistake. As soon as you start to relate to what the thoughts are saying like it's the truth, without questioning it, as soon as you relate to what you're feeling as if that feeling's the truth, that feeling's a, an authentic, legitimate experience to have in the circumstances you're in, as soon as you identify with the thinking or the emotions, right, then there's no chance. You're, you are in the story that it's telling you is real, and you will act as if the story is the truth, right? When you start to break out of that, when you start to uh, be able to see things as they are, when you start to realize that, uh, that you lose your mind, you know, that you lose your perspective in situations that occur, and when that happens, you go into an upset state, and when you go into an upset, upset state, you try, and, you, you try and stop and control what's happening, right? Or you try and avoid it, you, tr you try and resist it, you try and repress it, you, like that. That's the automatic mechanical way that the mind and the body and the personality works. But now if you're studying this and you're applying this, right, that you, you're starting to pay attention in such a way where you're not involved with it anymore. You see it, but you're not being it. You're aware of it, but you're not involved with it anymore. And if you practice doing that, right, in the beginning, there will be sometimes when you succeed and sometimes when you fail. And if you take the failures to mean that, you know, that what you're doing isn't real and true, that will be a mistake. You will have to fail. Learning involves failure. You, know, you will have to fail in this process, but if you stay with it, right, if you stay with it and you keep deepening your understanding and you keep practicing formal meditation, it's, it's inevitable that you'll have breakthroughs. It's inevitable that you'll have breakthroughs. And sometimes the way those breakthroughs happen is something very dramatic. 
you know, something very dramatic. You might have been practicing with the little stuff, right? And then something big happens, you know, somebody dies, right? Or you get a serious diagnosis, right? Or some circumstance occurs, right? And because you've been practicing, when you're in the middle of this breakdown, right? Because normally when things happen that are that heavy duty for people, they have a breakdown. You know, they have a breakdown, they can't function. You know, it's too much, I'm overwhelmed, it's too much. And what happens if you're practicing this consistently and your understandings are deep enough, you can have a breakdown and in the middle of the breakdown have a breakthrough. This is what has happened for a lot of people. This is what happened for Eckhart Tolle. He was, he was in the middle of a breakdown, right? He was going to commit suicide and he had a breakthrough, right? Same thing with uh, Ramana Maharshi. Uh, he was in the middle of a breakdown in the sense that he was scared to death about death. He was scared of dying, right? And so he wanted to understand what happens when you die because it's terrifying me, right? He was in the middle of that experience and he had a breakthrough. So by practicing with the little things over time, you are developing more of a presence that will become available to you when something big happens and then you'll be able to stay grounded, you'll be able to stay awake and you'll be able to not let it overwhelm you and not let it destroy your, the quality of your life. Because no, this is good, this is good because this is what happens. This is, this is why you have, to get, you have to be patient with the process, right? Because if you listen to what Bob said, it sounds like, it sounds like he's talking about what I just said. Now, but if you listen closely, he said, I'm angry. As soon as you say, I'm angry, right, you've identified with the emotion. Right? I'm angry. Instead of anger came up, right? Anger came up. So if you were really practicing this and you saw the anger come up and then you saw, if you, and if you've listened to Bob's description, if you listen to the description, you notice that it's unfairness is there, it was, this is unfair, that victimization is there, you know, I was a victim of this, right? Oh, there are two of us with this. It was me too. Oh, well, she, yeah. <laughs> so, you, yeah, 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 it does. The yeah, yeah, yeah. They would speak up if they yeah. So. So, so it's an opportunity to practice, but like I said before, it doesn't mean you, the practice is gonna be perfect. It means that you may, you, first of all, you have to remember to practice under the situation, right? A lot of times people don't even think to do that. They go right into the upset, right? But if you're, if you're practicing, you look at the thoughts that come up and you notice it's a story in which you're, you're the victim. It shouldn't be happening, right? So it's gonna be an upset because it shouldn't be happening, right? You don't like it, you don't want it, you want it to change, right? Like that. So if that were the case, if you were able to get yourself grounded and look at the thoughts and look at the emotions, you may or may not do anything after that. You may not do anything. You may just accept that, you know, it was necessary to do that because of the rain. They, they couldn't have the kids outside, you know, so the why had to do that. Complaining about it isn't going to make any difference, right? Or you might go ahead and complain about it, and if, but if you did complain about it and you went through this process of applying what I'm talking about, even if you complained about it, you would be a lot easier to deal with. Because you would just, you would be talking in a lot more neutral terms instead of being upset. Right? People have, because when you're upset, people have to deal with you, right? And a lot of times that goes bad, right? Because you're upset, then they get defensive because you're upset, and then you get defensive because they're upset, and before you know it, everybody's upset and nothing got handled. Yeah, that's, that's one of the favorite sayings of a personality. <laughs> it is. It's one of the favorite, but it's not necessarily true. Sometimes a squeaky wheel gets killed. Oh, but it wasn't because of the ring. They were giving the intermediate and good players five times to use the gym, and they were taking one of the two times that those of us, well, he's not a beginner to do it, they were taking it totally away from us for no reason. Oh, that's different. Now I, and now I understand. <laughs> Now I understand, you're so right, you're so right, that was so wrong. D do, you see, do you see how easy it is to fall into an upset? You, you could fall right into the upset. Real 